the greatest heist in Japanese history. A man posing as a police officer on a motorcycle effected a traffic stop on a Nippon Trust bank vehicle. The fake cop left the scene with the bank's cash in hand. But it wasn't as simple as a traffic stop. The entire operation was a calculated setup that led to a historic score of 300 million yen. Japan, 1968. Despite global turmoil, the civil rights movement, the anti-Vietnam War protests, the cultural revolution of China, the so-called global revolutions of 1968 could no longer impact Japan's boom in production of consumer electronics. And with that much money floating around, various crimes emerged one after the other. On December 6th, the manager of the Nippon Trust Bank received a mysterious letter demanding 3 million yen from the bank's deposits and to be brought to a nearby location before 5 p.m. the next day. Half of the words in the letter were handwritten and the remaining words were picked up from magazines and pieced together. If the manager didn't comply, both his home and workplace would be bombed. The bank manager refused to comply and instead called the police, who sent around 50 officers to stake out the alleged drop-off location. Officers found nothing suspicious and looked no further. Four days later, on the morning of December 10th, four branch employees of the Nippon Trust Bank transported 300 million yen, equivalent to just over $800,000 in 1968, or 2.3 million today. The money was loaded into metal boxes and placed into the trunk and was on its way to the Toshiba factory to be used for employees as bonuses and is divided into three large iron boxes with each box containing almost 100 million yen. While en route to the factory, the four men were stopped in the street next to a Tokyo prison by a uniformed motorcycle officer. The police officer informed them that their branch manager's house had been blown up and they had received a warning that dynamite had been planted in the transport vehicle, which of course was all bullshit. He was never gonna blow up the house. He was never gonna meet at a drop location. He knew the manager would call the police as he was playing psychological chess to create paranoia amongst the Nippon Bank employees. And because of this paranoia, he knew the employees wouldn't ask him any questions. The officer informed the four men to exit the vehicle and to hide behind a nearby wall while he inspected their vehicle for the bomb. Moments later, the employees noticed smoke and flames coming from beneath the vehicle. The officer rolled out from underneath, shouting that the vehicle was going to explode at any second. As the four men braced themselves, the police officer then got into their car and drove away still burning on the ground was a road flare. They were in absolute disbelief that they just got hustled out of 300 million yen by one guy with a fucking road flare. All four bank employees had seen the appearance of the suspect, so the portrait of the suspect was quickly drawn. 120 pieces of evidence were gathered from the crime scene, including the stolen motorcycle, which was painted white to replicate Tokyo's motor unit. A massive police investigation was launched, posting 780,000 montage pictures throughout Japan. The list of suspects included 110,000 names, and 170,000 police officers participated in the investigation, the largest investigation in Japanese history. Police focused a search on the scene from which the motorcycle 
a Yamaha Sport 350R1 was stolen. It was stolen between November 19th and 20th. At that time, police motorcycles were all made by Honda, and there was no Yamaha police motorcycle. The motorcycle was originally blue and was spray painted white. Well, actually, fuck, I think I, I, think I already said that that it was spray painted white. Well, it was spray painted white. <clears throat> Anyways, the road flare or the smoke bomb used was a high flare five manufactured by Carlet Hodagaya plant in Hodagaya district, Yokohama city. The type used during the robbery was determined to be acquired from a gas station. A PA system loudspeaker was mounted on the motorcycle. According to the serial number, a total of five products of the same batch were found of which four were confirmed whereabouts. And the last one was stolen at a construction site. The police then located the stolen bank vehicle at the Kokubun Temple ruins in Nishimoto town. Only then did the police realize that the suspect had changed cars on the way. No trace was found, no matter how much they searched. The police questioned the nearby residents and a witness stated they saw a blue Toyota Corolla parked at that location two days prior to the incident. Immediately afterwards, police located the Corolla in an open space of a nearby high school. After checking the license plate of the Corolla, they found that it was, in fact, another stolen vehicle. Inside the Corolla was an empty safe. The prime suspect was a 19-year-old male who was the son of a local motorcycle police officer. And only five days after the robbery occurred, this suspect was suddenly found dead. The cause of death, cyanide poisoning. The man had no alibi for the robbery, but the money was not found after his death, which was ruled a suicide. His father insisted he was innocent and he was subsequently cleared of charges. Out of the list of 110,000 names, one by one, investigators crossed each name off of their list. Another suspect was a 26-year-old male arrested on unrelated charges who was found to match the composite sketch of the fake police officer. He was released because he had been taking a proctored exam at the time of the crime, and they wouldn't have another suspect for seven years. In 1975, a friend of the deceased 19-year-old suspect was arrested on an unrelated charge. He was found to be in possession of an extremely large amount of money, but police were unable to prove the money was from the robbery. The seven year long investigation offered few answers. And back in December, 1975, the statute of limitations on the crime had passed. As of 1988, the thief has also been relieved of any civil liabilities. Seven years despite the efforts of hundreds of detectives and tens of thousands of police officers. It's even said that a few died of exhaustion while working the case. And although that may seem a little bit over the top, so does the price tag of how much this investigation cost. In 1998, a 55-year-old man by the name of Yuhi Ogata claimed to have been the mastermind behind the heist. The claim was initially made by a Japanese magazine writer, Shukano Zeki, who claimed to have solved the crime through the existence of a 500 yen note that Ogata supposedly gave to a 10-year-old boy for good luck in 1968. Ogata openly admitted that he and another accomplice were able to sneak the money past police roadblocks using a truck transporting glass panes. Soon after, they fled to opposite ends of the country, the validity of his story has been questioned by a number of people, including his family, who stated Ogata was constantly bugging their family for money. The offender and mastermind behind the 300 million yen heist has never been found. He's become a legendary historical figure in Japanese culture. <laughs> And some like to think he moved someplace far away with a shitload of money. Not a single event is ever compared to this incident. It will forever be known as the greatest heist in Japanese history.
Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And also be sure to check out my other heist videos. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.